The Farm Travellers Rest is so named because for many years that's exactly what it was. A place where travellers could outspan their animals and give them a well-deserved break before tackling either the Pakes Pass or the long and dusty road north to Kalfinia. Today it is still a working farm, but also offers some really nice accommodation in 22 different cottages, a small restaurant, and the main attraction is a shortish hiking route along which you can view some well-preserved Bushman paintings. So even though space is fairly limited when traveling by motorcycle, one of the things I always try and take with me is a good pair of walking tackies. Because some of the stuff out here that's worth going to have a look at will involve a short walk, maybe a long walk. And but walking is not bad for you anyway. So right now we're going to get changed and then we're going to take a walk down the Sevilla Rock Art Trail. The age of the rock art in the Sierdeburg ranges from around 8,000 years to as young as 200 years. And the artists responsible for most of the rock paintings in this area were sand hunter-gatherers, who lived all over South Africa for thousands of years before European colonization. These Bushman paintings are both very special and sad. They're special because the whole Sederberg is a legacy of the Bushman. The paintings tell a silent story of their lives. Some pictures depict actual events that happened like hunting, gathering fruit, Others are more mythical. No one really knows what they meant. And they're sad because a whole people lived here. They lived in these caves, on these lands. There's an abundance of water. There's fruit and nuts. There was good hunting. And they're gone today because they were wiped out, really, with the arrival of the Europeans, either by their European diseases or, sadly, by their bullets. These people were hunted like vermin because they didn't understand the concept of ownership of land or ownership of the animals. They believed it belonged to everybody, and the two ways clashed, and it meant the end of them. But at least the paintings survive to tell the story, and it will probably be here forever. When you collect your permit for the Sevilla Trail from the reception at Traveller's Rest, they give you this pamphlet. And this is very handy because it shows you where to come and look for the rock paintings. For instance, if I'd come along here on my own, I probably wouldn't have thought to come look under this, what they call the balancing rock. But there we are, now I know where to go. And I hope this rock is as balanced as they say it is. If you're staying at Traveller's Rest and you're a little bit lucky, you may be able to arrange a visit to Solomon's Laughter. I'm told it was a very special place where the Bushmen would gather. But we've been fairly fortunate. We've managed to arrange a visit there this afternoon. So we're just standing at the gate here, waiting for Skulk to come fetch us, because this is a guided experience only. You may not just go there. So we're feeling pretty privileged actually. The Salman's Laughter paintings are fascinating and mysterious. One of the most common themes to these paintings is elephants. And yet looking around in this area, one cannot comprehend them around here. Other mysterious paintings resemble boats. There are many theories regarding these images, with some suggesting that they are evidence of traders, representations of shamanistic visions, or of antelope-headed serpents. Whatever they are, they are haunting and beautiful. So the Cedarburg was also the southernmost battleground of the Second Anglo-Boer War. Small bands of Boer guerrillas penetrated this area from the Boer Republics, hundreds of kilometers to the north. They came here looking to drum up support from the mostly Dutch farmers. And this they failed because while the Dutch had little sympathy for the English, they certainly had a fair notion of who was going to win the war. As you stand out here and look at the amazing countryside around you, You'd be forgiven for wondering what they were out here fighting about. Besides it being bewilderingly beautiful, there isn't that much else out here. But there were some small battles and skirmishes, and as you travel around, you'll find quite a few examples of Anglo Boer War gravesites. I suppose the most famous of these would be the Lone Englishman's gravesite that stands at the top of the R364, just before the turn off to the Bitter Valley. And that's where we're going right now. So while we were doing our research, we found two stories of how Lieutenant Close was possibly killed. Now the first story goes along the lines of a lone Englishman who approached a bunch of camped Boers and demanded they surrender. They tried to point out the folly of his predicament and when he wouldn't back down, they shot him. I've been an Englishman myself, I refuse to believe that anybody could be that stupid. So I tend to believe the second story.
The more likely story is that Lieutenant Close was killed when a scouting party of four British soldiers was ambushed by the retreating Boers on January the 30th, 1901. Later, as the British forces under the command of Colonel De Lau advanced on the last known position of the Boers, Lieutenant Klaus's body was found and the column stopped to bury him at Klipfontein where he fell. So one of the more amazing parts about this story is his mother. She came out and erected this headstone you see here and for years afterwards came out here every year on the anniversary of his death to lay a wreath. And this is no small feat when you consider this was the days before aeroplane travel. So it was a boat journey followed by a very dusty and very long car ride from Cape Town. And I think, I think that's just amazing. Well, we've paid our respects and now there are two things we're really looking forward to. Firstly, our overnight accommodation is only 14 k's away from here, where we get to meet the 7th and the 8th generation of the Liver family. It's also time to leave the tar behind altogether. No more tar for the next three days. It's going to be fantastic. And because we're leaving the tar behind, we're going to take you through just a few things that we do to this motorcycle to make it a little more comfortable on the gravel roads. And Hank, I suppose the first thing that comes to mind is tire pressures. Yes, sir. Sure.